there are more and more people caring for older relatives or for partners or spouses or other close persons that they, they, they live with and that population will only increase and also the reasons why people are dying are very different now so people are less likely to die from infections, acute heart attacks, problems like that. We're moving more to chronic comorbidity, um, illnesses such as obstructive airway disease, dementia is becoming a lot more common. Um, so I think if we can show the burden that is placed upon some carers and how it can affect the health within populations that makes a very strong case for providing more support to cohabitees and carers of people with life-limiting illness. So we're looking at the experience and impact that caring has on people in terms of the impact that it has on their general health and their day-to-day -day well-being. What we're doing is using a large database which covers thousands of general practices and millions of patients and by doing that we can provide some really big headline data about the impact that caring has on people's health. And we're comparing people who care for someone who's dying with dementia, with someone with cancer, with someone with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. So we're identifying patients who have died with those illnesses and then looking at the health of their carers before the person dies and after the person dies. At the moment, a lot of caring is very hidden within the community and lots of people may not actually identify themselves as carers. Being a carer can be different for everyone and no two carers have the same experiences. But in certain illnesses, caring can be different. So for example, if you're caring for someone with dementia, the person with dementia may be confused at night. They may be wandering around the house at night. Carers of people with dementia can get very exhausted and very tired. If you're caring for someone with, for example, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, the caring burden may be slightly different in that that person may be um, cognitively and mentally well, but there may be a higher physical care burden and the person may need more help with moving around and washing and dressing. Um, but at the moment we don't really know what those differences may be and this is something where our research project may provide some of the answers. If we can see where people most need support, that support can be directed. So in the example of people with dementia, it may be that the carers and people who live with someone with dementia need a lot more support before the death and it may be that people who are caring for someone with cancer need more support after the death and it just helps us to focus perhaps our, our care and our services to where it's really needed. We will look at lots of different experiences and different factors so we can look at the carer's health before the person that they're looking after dies and then we can look and see how that changes after the person has died. So there's some evidence to suggest that um, people who care for someone with dementia may actually feel better and their health may improve after the person with dementia has died because the burden is very different and they experience a slow and anticipatory bereavement. Whereas when someone dies with, with cancer or other illnesses, there is some evidence to suggest that their health may worsen after the person they've cared for dies. But that's very speculative and doing this kind of analysis helps you tease out whether there's any truth in those. I think it's so important because carers do the majority of the care and I think health professionals often forget that, that the carer is with this person and they are with the dying process 24 hours a day and seven days a week. They often neglect their own health, they often don't look after themselves. Um, and I think that any research that helps us to quantify um, the, the, the burden and the stress on carers is very important.